This is The Stash, and you're listening to the Business Bottom Line Podcast, coming to you from the jewel city of the mountains, Greenville, Tennessee. We're in the foothills of the Smokies, talking business with people just like you who are responsible for the bottom line, sharing business tips to inspire, inform, and improve, and turn your bottom line from red to black. Our guest today is Miss Carlene Stanton with Community Insurance. So let's get acquainted. So hello, Miss Carlene. Hello, everybody. Uh, we're glad to have you on the podcast today. And uh, in case you didn't know, I know you do, but you're the very first one, <laughs> so you're special. Yes. So just just tell us who you are and what you do. All right, I'm Carlene Stanton. I am a chief financial officer here at Community Insurance. Um, have many duties beyond that. Um, part agency owner, uh, commercial, CSR, producer, accountant, um, many, many, many hats of the agency, but I enjoy them all and it makes every day different. Now that's a lot of hats. You must <laughs> spend a lot of time changing hats. I don't bother <laughs> with that actually. <laughs> So, uh, introduce us to your family. Tell you, tell us a little bit about your family. I have two wonderful children. A daughter who just gave birth to my first grandson in April, and um, he is just a little butterball of joy. And I have a son who is attending high school. Um, started driving this year, and his first job. So it's it's been quite an exciting year so far. Well, that's great. And uh, just in case folks out there don't know, he is also our audio engineer for the podcast. So, hey, Patrick, <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate that. So, what's a favorite activity for you and your family that's not part of work? Um, one of our most favorite things to do, especially in the summertime, is uh, go out and visit places, uh, national forests nearby, like Horse Creek, Paint Creek, and those areas. Um, a lot of times find the swimming holes. Those are the best spots. And just enjoy the mountains and the beautiful scenery. That's one of the great things that you can do here in Greenville if you just have an afternoon. There's so much outdoor activity that you can do. And we're uh, right in what's called the foothills of the Smokies. Yes. So it doesn't take but just a few minutes to get right in the edge of the National Forest and take advantage of the mountain streams and the and the swimming holes out there get quite cold. They are pretty uh, chilly. Yeah, even in the <laughs> summer when it's hot, yes. they'll cool you off quick. So, uh, yeah, so tell me, uh, have you read a book lately or give me a favorite book that you have read in the past uh, that gives us a little insight into what you like? Well, um, the most recent book that I have been in is actually... A book that goes along with a regeneration program at a local church here that I attend, and um, it's a it's a year long program. So, and this is my third time through. So I've read it before, but it's new every time, and I learn something different every time. <laughs> so it's a it's a great program. Well, uh, I know about Regen, uh, and it's interesting that you. Uh, Pick that book because it's not a typical book you read. Right. It's a book you work through yes. <laughs> in great detail and sometimes consternation because it uh, kind of probes down into the depth of who you are. Don't yes, it? exactly yeah. right. That's I'm familiar with that. Uh, been through that myself. Uh, tell us uh, about your phone, Android or Apple uh, iPhone, and why. Ooh. I currently have an Android. I've had an Android probably for uh, eight or nine years. I had an iPhone previous to that. I'll have to say Android, probably just because that's what I'm accustomed to and I don't like change. <laughs> um, but uh, it's been a while since I've had an iPhone, so I'm not familiar with those anymore. Um, but the Android seems to work well for me. That's my preference. Okay. Well, it, uh, I have noticed that uh, people kind of get started down one track or the other, and whichever one you're on, it's difficult to change. Yes. You might change brands, 
but you really don't change the operating system, either the iPhone or the Android. And the older so, we get, the less we like changing yep, those things. Yep, I hear you. I hear you. That's so true. Uh, not only do you not like it, it's just doggone hard. That's right. So uh, I'd rather not. Uh, so uh, let's talk a little bit about work. Uh, what's uh, the biggest or one of the biggest hurdles you face at work? What's, what's a difficult task before you? Um, probably the biggest challenge here is just distraction, Hmm. I would say. And that's just because there are so many avenues of communication now, as opposed to, let's say, even uh, 10, 15 years ago. Um, so you, you have, um, people that come in to see you, you have the phone ringing, you have... Uh, texts coming in, you have emails coming in, um, and faxes on occasion still. Um, So that makes it probably, I think, the most challenging part of the job. Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, I I understand what you're saying. Uh, It used to be if you communicated with someone, it was either over the telephone or through the mail. Right. And both of those still happen. But all these other pieces are added in so that people are coming at you from so many different uh, avenues of communication. And, uh, you know, if, if you communicate the wrong, with the wrong one, they don't hear you, do they? Right. They, everybody has their own preference and their, the way they like to communicate. I myself am a texter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we're all texters in today's <laughs> world. Uh, uh, if, if I go to send somebody an email, I have to send them a text first and say, check your email because <laughs> right. they are not going to check it. And, of course, us people that work mostly in the office tend to be glued to the email hour by hour and trying to keep the inbox uh, shrunk or, or not overflowing. Yes. But if you're out on the job, you know, we deal with uh, construction workers, uh, business owners who are not worried about emails they're trying to get the job done right. whatever their job is and so uh they they tend to text but but they do come i get messages from facebook and i bet you do too people uh, wanting you to do things that's one thing i forgot facebook messages yeah absolutely and uh i don't think i've got a tiktok message i'm not sure what that looks like i know what tiktok is but i've never been one or been in one, so I, I I don't even I'm not going there. That's somebody else's. Yeah. That's probably Patrick's venue. TikTok. I don't know. There's not the Snapchat me. too. Oh, Snapchat. Yeah, and uh, WhatsApp, uh, something like that. I don't know. There's uh, so many. <laughs> yeah, but I understand what you're saying though. It's it's difficult to uh, get on the same uh, communication page with people because there's so many options, and that's a challenge for us. Uh, Probably ask people when they communicate with you how they want to communicate so yes. you know. Yeah. Yes, and if you forget to ask, you learn that very quickly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's so true. Uh, so let's talk about what you do. What's it like being you? Uh, give us a sample of your, your day or your morning or something that helps us see uh, what you do in your work. Okay. Well, let's see. Um, usually come in uh, to open the office if you don't beat me here already. Um, so unlocking the money drawer, getting all the lights on, TV, music, um, getting all the computer ready and the 50 tabs that I have open every day <laughs> that I work in throughout the day. Um we have Ashley here who, who answers the phones until about 2 o'clock, so that's, that's very helpful um, as far as distractions go. But beyond that, um, just many different things, uh, assisting people with change requests on their policies um, for many of our commercial clients, um, certificates and things like that. Um, or changes that they may need um, to comply with uh, contracts that they have with other business that they're doing work for, Um, looking at 
uh, renewals that were coming out in the next few months to review and getting in touch with clients to go over um, those things to make sure we have them insured properly and accurately and uh, and to offer things that that they may need so um, that's that's pretty much my day in a nutshell well it sounds like your day is pretty full most days so uh, the emails flying the phones ringing the texts are going in and out and uh, lots of activity to get done yes. uh, I know uh, what you do helps other people how how do you describe that, not in the detail of uh, the tasks, but how do you describe or how do you think about how what you do uh, affects and helps other people? Um, the biggest thing for me um, that I feel and the most satisfaction that I get out of the job um, as far as helping people is just feeling like I can help people breathe sigh a sigh of relaxation a burden lifted um, to be able to provide those things that protect their assets their uh, finances in the case of uh, something catastrophic happening that might steal away everything that they have um, I get a lot a lot of satisfaction I have passion about that too mm. um, just being able to be a be a relief for somebody to help somebody be prepared for something like that happening um, so that they can be restored and, and continue on in life. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think probably that a large part of people that uh, are either drawn to or stay in the insurance business have that uh, common motivation of wanting to help other people yeah. uh, because there are parts of it that's very mundane and some of the terms are can be overwhelming because they're legal terms. And uh, right. I know one of the challenges we try to uh, live by here in, in the office is don't talk to people in insurance speak, <laughs> yeah. speak in plain language so they can understand what we're talking about. And, uh, but but the, uh, the obvious uh, thing that draws us together is wanting to help other people right. at, uh, at a critical time because when people have claims and uh, the world uh, maybe feel like it's falling apart. I know especially when you have uh, fires that destroy or almost completely destroy your, your home or your business. Those are terrible traumatic yes. times. And you want to be able to help people by uh, having the insurance part of it prepared so that they can be restored. Right. So that's, uh, yeah, that's really, that it really is something that I think is common to people that stay in the insurance business. So what, uh, we talk, kind of talked about a hurdle and it may be similar to that, but what's the biggest challenge for you personally uh, that, that you feel like you face? Uh, on maybe somewhat of a regular basis, or uh, if I say biggest challenge, what is it that comes to mind that's a big challenge for you uh, in, the, in the work you do in the business? Um, I would have to say it, it does run along the lines of that distraction and so many things coming at you from so many different directions. Um, just trying the challenge is to stay focused. Um, and not to get distracted to the point that you can't remember what you were doing five minutes ago before somebody came in or the phone rang. Um, and our, our system and our processes and things like that really, really help a lot with that because I'm always uh, I'm afraid that I'm going to miss something or forget something. So I'm thankful for those things that we have in place that... Uh, help me keep my head on straight <laughs> so I can get everything done that that needs to be done so those boring processes do have value <laughs> yes <laughs> even when they uh, don't feel like when you're trying to figure out what's step one step two step three but they do have value and in a way uh, they do help us overcome those challenge of distraction yes. and uh, overwhelm sometimes so do you have any particular insight in uh, how you see the future unfolding in relationship to the business. I know there's 
lots of things going on in the world we could talk about that are uh, opportunities and uh, challenges, but do you have anything that you kind of see unfolding in the future related to the business? Um, I know COVID brought about uh, a lot of different things, and and if you weren't going into a, a, the technology piece of things and communicating with people um, in, in other ways besides face-to-face, which is still needed, um, but it, it brought about a lot of challenges um, and kind of pushed us forward into um, doing some different things that, that we were actually already doing. It's been more difficult for, for others who weren't uh, as involved in staying on the cutting edge of technology um, use in business. Um, but I, I see um, the, the instant era <laughs> getting, getting larger and coming closer all the time just as far as um, people needing things and, and being able to go online and, and get something, you know, within a couple of minutes that, that they need, uh, like Amazon, for instance. Everybody expects things now and quickly and maybe yesterday um so i i think that's kind of where we're going and um just being able to um educate people um in ways that they'll see you know through social media and and different social platforms um to help them make better choices, make the right choices for things that they need, and just make that available however we can so that, like we were talking earlier, however their communication preference is, they're able to get what they need um, in a timely manner. Okay. Well, we're down almost at the end, and so I ask everybody this question each time. Uh, Give your best bottom line business tip because there's business people out there listening they're in business and the bottom line is what matters and one of our uh, uh, sayings is we want to turn that bottom line from red to black so what is if you're going to talk to that business owner what's your best bottom line tip oh let's see i would have to say um be kind and encouraging to people Hmm. I like that. That's a good tip. Uh, it's probably one we all know, but we need to be reminded of. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, thank you very much for being here as our guest today. Absolutely. And that's a wrap for today's Business Bottom Line podcast. Take that tip and make your bottom line turn from red to black. See you next time right here in the jewel city of the mountains, Greenville, Tennessee. This is the stash saying we're here to inspire, inform, and improve your bottom line so you can grow, grow, grow.